Hey, this is Eric with Program with Eric.com, and today we're going to go over a quick example on how to use Ember Computed Properties. Ember Computed Properties is pretty fundamental with Ember JS. It's used throughout their code base um, in any sort of big application or any real in-depth application. You're probably going to be using Computed Properties. The way they work, they're kind of like functions. Um, you can use them in your templates, but they actually change based on if they're defend they're descendant values change. So we'll go ahead and take a look at a quick example of how that works. So before we start, I just went ahead and created a new application here called Computed Example. And we'll go ahead and just create an application controller. And I already have the Ember server running in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and look at our application controller here. And I'm going to create two properties. And this is kind of the canonical example of how this works. And this is, you'll see this in all the different examples out there for computed properties. So let's just take a look, make sure our properties are working. We have two properties here in the Ember controller. If we look at our application template, we can just simply go something like this. Last name here, handlebar syntax, and we can just make sure those are showing up. Yep, hello Eric Hanchett. So we know obviously that's working. Um, before we actually write the computed property, well, let's go ahead and add in a way to change those values. We'll use the input helper here. Oops, and we'll change it to last name here name last name and if we do it there it is and we can see our two-way bindings working here uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look back at our controller and let's say we wanted to display this in one property so we can create a property called full name we'll do ember.computed it'll rely on the first name and the last name and then we'll have a function here and we'll return we'll go ahead and return this dot get first name and this dot get last name okay let's see if that works up oh, there it is uh, hello Eric up oh, before we do that let's make sure I change it inside here all right there it is so it's still working here so we can see definitely that it's pulling the full name Ember Computed property. And the reason why you'd want to do this, it, a nice thing about it is that it's it uh, the values get cached. So what you'll have often happen in large applications, you'll have multiple keys, you'll have multiple computed properties that depend on other computed properties. So if, if we had, a, like let's say, another computed property in, inside here, this computed property wouldn't it uh, wouldn't trigger unless the one of the dependent keys changed so it's not going to keep uh, it's not going to keep triggering and changing each dependent key even though it didn't change uh, one other thing we can do if we had something like other name we can use ember dot alias And what this does is 
it just it just aliases other name to full name. So we go back to our application controller here. And do um, other name. Oops. I think I know what the problem is. It's ember.computed.alias. There it is. So now I have both of them here. And you can see if you go into the Ember Computed namespace and look at the Ember guides, you can see alias is one of them. It creates a new property that's an alias for another property. There's also a whole bunch of other ones we can go into, but for the sake of the simplicity of this example, we're not going to look at the rest, but you have filter by, less than, greater than, things like that. And by the way, I'm using right here, I'm using string literals. It's part of ES6, and that's why I'm able to just grab the first name and last name like this, instead of having to construct the string some other way. So one other thing I want to show you guys is a new add-on that came out called Ember Computer Decorators. And Decorators is is in a, a JavaScript uh, proposal right now, but it's a way to annotate and modify classes and properties at design time. Um, it's an expression. You can always notify. You know it's definitely a decorator with this at sign right here. And it's part of ES7, or it's being proposed to be part of ES7. So to add it, I went ahead and already installed the add-on. You should ember install ember computed decorators like that and then after you have it installed you have to go into your ember CLI build JS file and you just add these three lines this Babel uh, and this optional ES7 decorators and once that's installed we can do a little bit different for our controller here instead of having uh, this full name with ember.computed we can put the at sign here and we can do computed. And we can go first name and last name. And then we can get rid of all this. And we don't need any of this. Well, we do need this part. We don't need to do this dot get anymore. So that's all well and good there. So it's a little bit cleaner, definitely cleaner syntax. We have to import computed from Ember computed decorators. And just to be consistent, we'll also import alias. So we can actually use decorators for alias too. So instead of going like this, we can go alias our full name and we just call it other name and that should be it so now we have our computed here first last name and as you can see we no longer have to do this dot get and the alias here so let's save that go back to our example refresh yep now we're now we're using the ember computed aliases uh, using the decorators so that's just about it. You can make sure this is working. I can return test. Can prove to you this is the same thing. See, there's test at the end. So it's definitely using this computed property here. Uh, decorator, that is. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And make sure to check out my Amber.js cookbook. The links are in the description. Thanks.